Hello, I'm Sean Roberts, Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me uh, Maine Secretary of State, Matt Dunlop. Uh, Matt, we've been talking about a couple uh, of different voter perspective questions or situations they might get in. Here's another one. Um, what should the voter do if their polling place is congested? Um, go ahead. Well, you know, um, the governor, Governor Mills has issued a series of executive orders around how to manage crowds during the pandemic and social distancing rules. Um, so part of what we are laboring under is the fact that no more than 50 people can be in a polling place at a given time. That includes all the poll workers. So what we're telling people is because we're coming into the November election, it was 25 degrees out when I got up this morning. And you know the weather can be a little bit unpredictable in early November, so we're telling people uh, dress accordingly. You may have to stand in line outside for some period of time in order to go in and cast your ballot. It moves pretty quickly, and because of the of the number of absentee ballots that have been requested, we don't anticipate heavy traffic at the polling place. But uh, if you find that there's a line, um, you know, if, if because it's difficult for you to stand outside, maybe come back a, at a time when things aren't so busy. Usually polling places are busiest early in the morning before people go to work or at noontime when they get out for lunch and then after work, you know, four to 6 p.m. And then um, it may have a, a bit of a push after the dinner hour. But, you know, the mid-morning, mid-afternoon is usually pretty quiet traffic. And that's really the time to go if you, if you feel like uh, you don't really want to, you want to minimize how much you, you have to stand outside. And we just tell people to dress accordingly. So just to be clear, you do not have early voting, early voting in Maine, right? Uh, but not really, not really. We don't have early voting. We, you know, we have in-person absentee balloting, which is sometimes confused with early voting. Right. The difference is they're not actually casting the ballot. They're putting it in the envelope for it to be tabulated later. Um, but so that's available 30 days before the election and people can make use of that and they are. Right. And they can drop off those ballots, um, primarily at the local election office is the correct right. place to drop those off. Yep. Okay. And you, you were saying 30 days before the election, they can drop those off. That's okay. right. In, in state absentees were available um, October 4th and people are returning. We've about had already about 95,000 ballots returned already. So nice. things are moving at a pretty fast clip. Yeah, I, I take it that's uh, faster than it was the previous election since there's more in uh, People are more interested in election, perhaps in the off presidential year, the last well, election the, cycle. The last presidential cycle, we processed about 250,000 absentee ballots. As of today, we were processing about 340,000 applications for absentee ballots. So it's right. much faster than it was four years ago. Uh, since you mentioned it, what, what's the average return rate of absentee ballots in your state? About 95%. Wow, um, that's very high. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, sometimes people forget they've requested an absentee ballot and then the seed catalogs come in and they lose it in the pile of seed catalogs or they, they change their mind. They decide to show up in person. Uh, and that's why tracking the absentee ballots is so important is that you know, we want to make sure that everybody gets to vote. Of course, they only get to vote once. And uh, if they have not been checked off on the incoming voter list, if they didn't return their absentee ballot, they can show up at the polls and they can vote in person. Excellent. Okay. Well, I, I think that explains that in depth. This has been Lincoln Shorts. So. Uh...